Good morning. It's a good day to be together. We're so glad that you're here. I'm Jamie Alexander, one of the pastors of the church, and I want to welcome you. And as is our practice here, we want to, we want to begin our service and prayer, inviting God to come and, and to be with us. Will you join me as we pray? Our wonderful God, as we gather here this morning, we invite you to be present in our service. We pray that all that we will say and all that we will do will be pleasing to you. Father, will you release your spirit upon us as we gather here? As we remember our baptism, as we encounter you, will you bring the waters of cleansing, renewal, and hope for us? This is our prayer as we dedicate our service to worship to you in prayer. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good to see everyone here this morning. We just want to welcome you. If you're a guest with us this morning, we, we want to welcome you. If you're a guest for the first time, we especially want to say how much we appreciate you worshiping with us. We'd like for you to know more about this church and the way that that can happen is before you leave here this morning, stop in the narthex at the table out there. Just give us your name and address. When you do that later in the week, someone will stop by and just drop off a mug a mug that is filled with information that tells about all the ministries and the programs that we have in this church. We have so many ways of serving our Lord, serving the community, and serving one another. We know that as you read about those things and you watch those things in our church, you will want to be a part of this church as well. If the attendance pads have not been passed, please do that now. Uh, be sure to Take a look at them when they come back down the aisle. Look to see whose names you may not be familiar with and take just a few minutes to welcome those people who you have not met or who you don't remember having met. And, uh, and I know that that's what we want. We want to be a friendly church and, and it's just with each one of us doing that little bit that can make a difference. Thank you for that. Um, if you will open your bulletins to the ministry opportunities, I'd like to tell you that the church council meeting is tomorrow evening at 6.30 in the chapel. Everyone is welcome to come. One of the items that's going to be on the agenda is the approval of the 2012 church budget, uh, among other things that will be talked about, so we hope that you can be there. The Super Bowl of Caring is going to take place next Sunday, and there's a whole lot of information about that on the back of your bulletin, but quickly I'll tell you that our youth ministry, as you know, those of you that have been here a little bit know that they come out and they collect money for for the different things that happen in our community. And they're going to be doing that by having a soup luncheon from 1045 until 1215 on Sunday. Uh, it's only $3 for a bowl of soup, which includes crackers, a drink, and a dessert. So you support them in any way that you're able to. And they are going to use that money. All of that money is going to be distributed to local agencies in our community in the fight against hunger. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Amanda Kofer, who is the Associate Director and Campus Minister at University of Arkansas Wesley Foundation, and she is going to provide our mission message for this month. Excuse me. Good morning. Um, I just first off want to thank all of you for having me here, um, and thank you so much for supporting our ministry and what we do. We could not be a ministry if it weren't for congregations like you who uh, support us with your prayers and with your gifts. So thank you very much. I just want to share with you a little bit about what Wesley is, what we do, and give you a glimpse of kind of what our weeks look like. Most everything kicks off on Tuesday night. At 7 o'clock we feed the, the students. Uh, supper at 7 is what we call it. Um, it just gives us an opportunity to feed them some home-cooked food they get a little tired of cafeteria food after a while so they can come and eat something that has been made just for them and um, then after their bodies have been nourished then we can nourish their souls we have worship at eight after that this semester we're going through the lord's prayer line by line so we're only two weeks into the semester but already you can tell uh, it's having a really big effect on some of the students uh, we've had some really powerful 
powerful messages so far, and I just can't wait to see what the rest of the semester holds for that. Wednesdays, we have communion at 12.30. Uh, most people look at the week as Wednesday is kind of the hump day. You know, if you can get there, then it's all downhill until the weekend. We kind of view it as the opposite way. Uh, we look at the week from Sunday to Sunday, uh, worship time to worship time. So Wednesday is the low point of the week. So at 12.30, we gather and we pray for one another. We pray for the campus, for uh, the students, for the faculty, and for the staff. Uh, we go through and pray for just the freshmen, the sophomores, uh, particular dormitories. Uh, we just want to try and cover the campus in prayer. And then uh, we end that with communion. We also have several small groups that meet throughout the week on a variety of topics. Some, um, some groups are meeting discussing the book of Revelation so that it's not, uh, to see that it's not too scary of a topic. Others are praying through the Psalms. My group is pray or reading through the entire story of the Bible. We started last week with creation and we're moving on throughout the semester. So there's a lot of different things that students can get involved with. We also have a variety of just different stuff that happens throughout the week or throughout the semester. Yesterday we were able to go to Denning in Altus, Arkansas to help with some of the tornado cleanup. They had a tornado last May and they still just need help clearing debris and tree limbs. So we were able to go do that and it was great to uh, make friends with people in Altus and we hope to continue to go back throughout the semester. We also have a retreat that's going to come up at the end of February so if you would uh, please keep us in your prayers for that, um, just pray that the Spirit is able to move throughout the students and thus through the campus as well. Um, also, we just meet on the union or th in the union throughout the week. We have lunch with students. We meet with people. Uh, we just want to try and connect with as many students as we can. So, thank you again for all of your support. I'll be in the back after the service. There's a table, and you can pick up a name and pray for a student throughout this this month, um, this year, this semester. College can be really difficult. Um, just pray for the students. I mean, some of them are going to be graduating and still aren't quite sure what they're going to do after that. Um, and then we just have freshmen who still just are kind of lost and just need prayer for guidance. So um, thank you. If you have any questions, please come talk to me. I would love to meet you. Um, and thanks for your prayers.
we stand together, I'd like to ask you to join me in our call to worship. It's printed in our bulletin and will be on our screens. All who thirst, come to the water and drink deeply of these living streams. Our gracious God beckons and blesses us. God is good. And all the time. This morning we're continuing our sermon series, The Well. And you all will be invited to think about the cleansing waters of Baptists and of your own baptism. We're so glad that you're here today. I invite you to greet those around you. Make sure everyone is fit, made to feel welcome in the house of the Lord today.
Our scripture reading for this morning is from the letter to the Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verses 11 through 15. I will be reading from the New King James Version, and if you follow along in the Pew Bible, you will discover it's a little bit different. But listen for the word of God. But Jesus came as high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place, once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promise of eternal eternal inheritance. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward now for our times of tithes and our offerings. We set set aside a time in each of our worship services to give back a little of what God has given to us. This time of giving is for our members and our regular attenders. If you're a guest here, I pray that and thank that your participation here with us is enough gift for us. If you'd like to give, we would love to receive. We'd also like to offer that if you have an extra dollar in your pocket, that one dollar above your tithe and your offering, that's what we'd love to have that extra dollar to give just a little bit more to a world in need.
gracious and loving God, we offer these gifts in joy and thanksgiving of all that you have given us today, tomorrow, and for everlasting. In your holy name, amen. This morning we're going to sing Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. Charles Wesley wrote this song, and as you know, he wrote over 6,000 songs of, of worship. He, he wrote this song using a, word, a song that was familiar of the day. And he changed the words of that song to this song that is really a song of prayer. Love divine, all love's excelling is his way of addressing the Lord. And so as you sing this, make this your prayer this morning. seated. As you're taking your seats, if you would find the slim insert in your bulletin, it has our celebrations, our cares, and our concerns on it. I'd like to share those with you in this time of prayer and thanksgiving. If you have a prayer or a concern or a uh, celebration that you'd like to share with us here at the church, there's prayer cards in the pews that you can fill out and leave in the narthex in the prayer box or give to one of our ushers or one of the pastors. We'd always, we're always grateful when we get to pray with you or pray for you here at the church throughout the week. We want to remember in our prayers, particularly those in hospital, rehab, convalescing, and nursing care facilities here within our congregation. We have a number, including Juanita Clark, Madge Garrison, Jean Nordmeyer. We want to continue to pray for Pat Reed, who is still in Jefferson City, Missouri, but she is improving. We want to care for... Carolyn Sut or pray for Carolyn Sutton, Claude Bradley, Rod Alford is recovering from his knee surgery and is at home, Marilyn, uh, Marilis Roth, 
Bill Detlison, Bob Dittmer, Minna Johnson, Jack Tingblad, and Helen Claire Bothwell. I'm sure there are others in our congregation here in our community that need our prayers also that are recovering or currently ill. Please remember them always during your prayers. I want to lift up that there will be a memorial service for Shar Burby here at the uh, here in our sanctuary at 2 o'clock this Saturday. Please remember her family and, and her in your prayers. There are many to pray for. I've been blessed that I have a couple of college students that I can pray for. My very good friend and roommate in college, uh, Don Robertson, has a newly, uh, actually now just found out last week, is Colonel Don Robertson, so I'm thankful for his uh, promotion. But his son is in the University of Arkansas, and his roommate, Xavier, I get to pray for them. So we have a number of names for students here today in our Wesley Foundation. Please take one of those and pray for them. I know that they need our prayers in college as all the young people here struggle as we struggled at one time. Now, if we would, uh, let us prepare for our prayers this morning in song. Blessed God, we come here this morning to worship you. We come in thanksgiving and joy. But we also come in, in, in your favor, asking your favor and your comfort and your healing touch on all those in our congregation who suffer and rehabilitate, those that are working to get well. Lord, we pray for all of us as we never know when our health may fail. Please hold us up with your your hands, and your spirit. We ask that your spirit fall on us this morning as we worship and continue with us throughout the week as we go out to be your church. Lord, we pray this morning for the churches around us. Particularly we pray for Bella Vista Baptist Church as throughout this year we are trying to pray for all the congregations around us. Lord, we pray for all your children of this earth. May we know that you are our God and that you watch over us, that you lift us up and that our prayers are heard. Lord, we pray for the leaders of our country this week. As we enter into a year of, of elections, we enter into a year of controversy and name-calling. Lord, help us to remember that you are our leader, that we follow you as you lead us, that your spirit can guide us, and your spirit guides all those in leadership. Help them to remember that they are your children, that they are loved and blessed. Lord, no matter what we think, help us to know that everyone here on earth is your child, that deserves our blessings along with yours. Help us to be a church, Lord, that carries your blessings with us, that we carry it each day to our workplace, to our times of learning, to our moments with one another we share with friends and family. Lord, go with us this week. Help us to be your church. All these things we pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
This morning we're continuing in the part four of our sermon series as we focus on the well, remembering that water sustains life, but it's living water that changes our lives. And in each of these parts of this sermon series, we've encountered the living water of Jesus Christ. This morning we have opportunity to, to remember, to re-experience our baptism as we look at the life of Jesus and at his own baptism. I invite you to take the Pew Bible there, or if you brought your Bible from home, and join me as we share in the reading of the Gospel this morning. We're reading in Matthew's Gospel, in chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, where we find how Jesus and John at the River Jordan. So I invite you to join me. I'll be reading out of the IV translation. And then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? And Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. And as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment, heaven was opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In 2000, there was a movie that, that came out. It made a big splash in the world. It's on television often. And, and many of us rediscovered some, some bluegrass music. It was called, Oh Brother, Where Are where art thou? Remember that movie? In fact, it was on television last night. I didn't even know it. I turned on and caught the last 30 minutes of it. It's a story of, of three escaped convicts from prison. It's a story that takes place in Mississippi, in rural Mississippi, in 1937. And these three escaped convicts, one is Everett, and Everett's played by George Clooney, and then Pete and Delmer. They get in all kinds of, of mischief and and situations in the movie. And there's just one scene in the movie that's a baptismal scene. Remember it? Um, it the movie, the scene unfolds as in the background, Alison Krauss is singing, I went down to the river to pray. The three are in this wooded area that's right on the banks of a river. And these white-robed people, men and women, are dressed in baptismal gowns, and they're coming through the, the woods as they're going to the river to be baptized. Well, the three, they're, they're mesmerized. They're intrigued by what's going on, and so they also go to the river. The people are forming lines, and there the pastor is in the, the river, and he's baptizing them full immersion. Everett watches, and Delmer watches, and Pete watches. But it's Delbert that's moved by the whole situation of what's taking place and he he runs into the river he doesn't wait in line but he goes into the river and he takes his place before the pastor and he's baptized and he comes up and he's got a whole new attitude and as he's coming out of the river he he's talking to the other two and he tells everyone he tells pete that all his sins have been washed away even even the sin of of knocking over the piggly wiggly I mean, it's gone. Everything's all right. And Everett says to him, I thought you said you were innocent of that. And he says, well, I lied, and I've been forgiven of that too. And he said, he stretches out his arms. It's kind of an important part. He stretches out his arms in the movie, and he says, come on in, boys. The water's fine. That's my best Missy Appet. Mississippi accent, only it's not an accent, y'all. It's the way I talk. Uh, I found out I talk a lot like Delmer in the movie. But you know, that's what Jesus says to us. Come on in, boys. Come on in, girls. The water's fine. He invites us to come and to be a part of the water. And you know, we... We've... We all have a baptismal story. And our baptismal stories may be different. Some of us were baptized as infants, and some of us as children, some of us as teenagers, some of us was baptized as adults. 
Some of us, we were baptized at church. Maybe it was in, uh, with a bapti- baptismal font and sprinkling, or maybe it was full immersion. Some of us, we weren't baptized at church, but we were baptized at a creek or a river or a lake or, or maybe even a swimming pool. We've got a baptismal story. And you know what? I wish I could know your baptismal story. I want you to think about that. Think about that, because I want to tell you mine. I was baptized when I was 14 years old. I was in the seventh grade. We were going through confirmation in the winter, spring part of that year. And it came a point in time in our confirmation class at the First United Methodist Church of North Little Rock that we asked to make a decision. To make a decision to be baptized and also to ask to make a decision to join the church. Now that was an important decision. And I made that decision and was always glad I did. And so the day of my baptism came that year in March. And I knelt at the altar. I, can, I could take you to the place where, where it was. And that church at that point in time was a sanctuary. Today it's a Sunday school room. And I knelt there at, a, at an altar. And Greg Hensley was on one side of me. And he's now engineer here in Benton County. And David Bevins was on the other side of me. He's a third-generation physician still in North Little Rock. And I was baptized. Now, I was wearing a really pretty suit. In fact, it was baby blue and it was gold. It was yellow. The pants were baby blue and they were bell-bottom. The jacket, it was, it was plaid. It was yellow and, and blue plaid and it had a reversible vest one side was baby blue solid and the other was the plaid yellow and and blue so depending on my mood I could switch my vest and as I was baptized brother Muzon Man and brother Denzel Stoke that have both gone on to be with the Lord put their hands upon me with the waters of baptism my hair was so big and there was so much hairspray on it that the water beat it up on top of my hair it hit all the chemicals on my hair. It rolled off and hit the polyester chemicals on my body, and it fell to the altar. I don't really think, and I've thought about this a lot, I don't think water ever touched my body. I don't think there was any cleansing of that way that took place. But I'll tell you what. That was so amazing to me. And I was so excited that I had been baptized, that I, was, that I was a one with Christ. And an important part of my story is, was what happened on Monday. Because I had a really wonderful African-American English teacher in the seventh grade. Her name was Sylvia Allen. And I could go back to school on Monday morning. And I could tell Miss Allen about my baptism. And she could confirm that for me. She played such an important role in my decision for my baptism. Now, you've got your story. And I want to give you 30 seconds and permission to talk in church, all right? And what I want to ask you to do is to turn to the person next to you, if you would like. And for just 30 seconds or less, share your baptismal story with them. All right, one, two, three, go. You know, your, your story may be different from mine. You may have been baptized at a different time, in a different place, in a different, in different amount of water. But you know, the fact is, baptism for us all, is a, it's a defining moment in any of our lives as believers. It's a defining moment. Baptism, really for us as believers, it separates us from the tire kickers and the car buyers. I mean, it, it's a difference. You have to make a decision. It signifies that there's a change that has taken place. That, that we have faith in Christ. That we are, we are in union with the Lord. That we understand the forgiveness of our sins. Baptism 
It's really a precious jewel in our life. And as a precious jewel, it has many facets. There are so many sides to baptism. It has such great significance for us as believers in our life. Baptism, it reveals to us the beauty of the cross and all that the cross means. It signifies to us the darkness of sin and how sin touches our lives. It represents cleansing. It represents burial. It represents the gift of salvation and the power of redemption. It represents forgiveness of sins. It represents burial. It represents resurrection. It represents the death of the old. And it represents absolutely the birth of the new in our life. Baptism is what connects us with Jesus. And the baptism of Jesus means so much. And it means many things to us. As believers. Now here in John in Matthew's gospel in chapter 3. We once again meet John the Baptist. You know John the Baptist came with a message of repentance. He came to prepare the way of the Lord. That was, that was a vital part of who he was. And he was in part of the family of Jesus. He was the relative that was a little different, you know. Do you have one? He, that was Jesus' odd cousin. But that was John the Baptist. He had, a, he had to be bold in what he had to do. And he looked a little different, and he acted a little different, and he ate a little different from everybody else, and he lived separate from everybody. But John had an important role. And when Jesus came from Galilee to the river Jordan, there was John. And he goes to John, and he tells John, I'm ready for you to baptize me. But John just cannot think about baptizing Jesus. He said, it's not I who should be baptizing you, but it's you who should baptize me. And Jesus helped him to understand the important role he would play in Jesus' baptism. And Jesus was baptized by John there in the river. And scripture says that when he came up out of the river, that heaven opened. And God's Holy Spirit descended upon him. It rained down upon him in the form of a dove. And with the the anointing power of the Spirit coming upon Jesus, God boldly proclaimed. He loudly signified. He said, This is my Son, whom I love, and with whom I am well pleased. This is my Son, He said, whom I love. And with whom I am well pleased. Now my question for you is, why did Jesus go to John? Why did he go to the Jordan River to be baptized? I mean, Jesus we know was sinless. He was the spotless one. He had no need to be cleansed from the sin of his life. He didn't need the waters of forgiveness. He did not need to repent for anything. Why did Jesus need to be baptized? And there's many facets to that answer. One of the facets is the baptism of Jesus is an opportunity for God to identify Jesus as his son. For him to say, this is my son whom I love. And with whom I am well pleased. And although Jesus was never guilty of sin. Baptism is a means of, of recognizing. One, that he's fully divine. At the same time, he is fully human. The baptism of Jesus was a revelation by God to Jesus. And all the people who Jesus really was. It, it revealed to who, us, who he was. His baptism en enabled God so loudly to say, this is my son. 
this is me. God has come to earth. And when Jesus was baptized by John, what he was also doing was identifying with the ordinary, everyday person. He was identifying with us. People who seek God's direction and God's will for their life, who seek God to be involved in our life. The baptism of Jesus, it's found in all the Gospels. In Matthew and, I mean, in Mark and Luke, they really stress the personal part of Jesus' baptism. Now, Matthew that we read this morning, he really declares who Jesus was, who Jesus is. And in the baptism, we of Jesus through all the Gospels, we have both a, a private disclosure of Jesus and his identity and also a public testimony of who he is, that he's God's son, whom he loves and with whom he is well pleased. And the baptism of Jesus reveals to, to us that Jesus is an example to follow. He is. He came to earth to show us the way. He came to earth to invite us to follow him. And it's through following Jesus that we are led to God. To follow in the footsteps of the Father. Jesus did not come on his own. He came to draw us to the Lord. For us to turn from our own way of life and follow his way of life. To walk in that. To identify with him. See, he is never ashamed to be identified with us. And he invites us to be identified with him. So he came. And he's among us. And he identifies with us. He came as flesh. He came as blood. He came to experience the experiences we have. To, to share in the concerns we have. He came to experience trials and tribulation and difficulties in life like you and I experience so that He could help us, so that we could know that He could understand that He is with us, so that we could know truly that He loves, that He cares, that He is not ashamed to be identified with us, and He invites us to be identified with Him. One of the great women of faith in, in our lifetime is Corrie ten Boom. Corrie ten Boom was a Dutch lady. She was from a Dutch Christian family. And during her lifetime, she experienced the tragedy of the Holocaust in Holland and in Germany. She herself and her father and her sister found themselves imprisoned in a concentration camp in Germany. Innocent people that were deemed criminals. You know what her family did? They were held weekly prayer meetings for the salvation of Jews. They identified themselves with Jewish people. They supported and they encouraged and they ministered to people who were Jewish. Now, this wasn't something that they had done merely in their lifetime, but it was a part of their family. In fact, Corey Ten Boom's grandfather in 1844 in Harlem, Holland, had began these prayer services, and they had continued for a hundred years until 1944, when they had to end because of the World War. Corey Ten Boom's father was Casper Ten Boom. And when... Jewish people were forced to wear the Star of David upon their clothes, identifying who they were so that they were under persecution. He willingly had the Star of David sewn to his clothes because he wanted to identify with the people that he loved and he cared about and that he was in no way ashamed to be identified with. He chose that star. See, the baptism of Jesus... It really didn't have to take place, but yet it did. Because it's in the baptism that you and I witnessed Jesus entering into life, in the midst of life, 
in the pain and the sorrow and the care of life. We, we identify with Jesus in the waters of baptism. We know that He's not ashamed to be identified with us. Baptism signifies the relationship. It signifies that He came for us to invite us to follow Him. And it signifies too for us a moment of decision. Jesus had to make a decision for that to happen because it heightened His ministry in a very public way. It was from that moment on that life would never be the same for Jesus. He would enter into ministry. He would be in the presence of multitudes. He would be called upon to care for people in forms of healing and signs and wonders. He would be called on to share the good news and see people turn to God. It was in those those coming days and in those years that he would live that he would experience the pain and the hurt and the loneliness of the final hours of life. It was a moment of decision for Jesus because life would never be again. And he couldn't return to the old way of life. But he had to accept a new life. And see, in that, we know that when we make a decision, we will never make it and be left alone. Because Jesus wasn't. Because when Jesus made that decision, Scripture tells us that He came up out of the water and heaven opened up and God rained down upon Him in the form of His Spirit to equip Him to what God had called Him to do. God said, this is my son, whom I love, and with whom I'm well pleased. God identified himself with the son. The son identified himself with the father. It's in our baptism that we identify ourselves with the father. We identify ourselves with the son. That we are open to the Holy Spirit. That the trying God works in our life. And in turn, we identify ourselves with Him. Now, I really want to ask you to remember your baptism. Maybe you, you've not been baptized, and so you don't have a story to tell or, or anything to remember. This morning, you're going to be invited to remember your baptism by coming forward and, and allowing Pastor Lee and myself just to, to uh, touch your forehead with water. And we're going to ask you to remember your baptism. Now, as we prepare to do this, I want you to know that um, last fall, J.R. and Lane Anderson made a trip to Israel. And they wouldn't take me. I was kind of mad at them about that. Wouldn't you have been? And, and when they went, J.R., I think, asked me, is there anything you want me to bring you back? And I said, no, well, not a T-shirt that said J.R. and Lane went to Israel and all I got was his T-shirt. Uh, I didn't want that. But what I did ask, I said, will you bring me back water from the River Jordan? And they did. And they brought it in this bottle. This morning, this baptismal bowl has, has got water from the River Jordan in it. So as you come forward to remember your baptism, water from that river will touch your body as it touched the body of Jesus. Now maybe you've never been baptized, but you feel led to be baptized this morning for the first time. You're invited to come and to be baptized. And share with Pastor Lee and myself that that is your story. For we want to celebrate that part of your story with you. As we prepare to come this morning though, I want to invite you to remember your baptism as we share in these words. They will be presented for you on the screen, but they're also found in your bulletin. And so I want to ask you some very meaningful and important questions for your life. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? 
Do you accept the freedom of power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. An important question. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in His grace. Promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church in which Christ is open to people of all ages, nations, and races. And according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's Holy Church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? That's a part of your story. If you've been baptized, you've already answered these questions. But I ask you to really remember and consider how vitally important these words are to you personally as you identify yourself with the Lord and as the Lord identifies with you. I invite you to join me now as we pray a prayer, a congregational prayer of baptism. Eternal God, at the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant that they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting in your name. Amen. I invite you to come and to remember your baptism. by the cup.
Is there anybody that would like us to come to them that's unable to come forward? I want to invite you to join me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the moment of remembering our baptism. We thank you that you're in no way ashamed to be identified with us. And help us, Lord, to know that we are identified with you through your love, through your grace, through the cleansing power of forgiveness. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you walk with us and that you experience life with us and that you never leave us alone, but that you're always present. And it's in your holy name we pray. And together we say, Amen. This morning our closing hymn is Have Thine Own Way, Lord. I think it's 382 in your hymnal. And as, you, as we join in this song, I want you to know that you're invited to become a part of the church family here. You're invited to come on transfer of your membership from another church family, or another congregation, or if you would like to become part of the church here on profession of your faith in Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord, know that we would love for you to come forward. If you feel drawn to be baptized if you've never been baptized, we would love to do that too for you. So come as you feel led. Make this your song. Make this your song to the Lord. I invite you to stand as we sing together. Christ only always living in me. That's our prayer. And that's our declaration as we are not ashamed to be identified with the one who loves us most. Don't just come to church, but go out and be the church and bear the good news that our God is the God who's faithful in our past, in our present, in our future. I hope you'll have the most wonderful week. And please 
Stop by the table there and select a student's name to commit to pray for that student over the next course of the few weeks. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.